Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Snaps, your uh, favorite college football podcast. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, T. Bob Abear, joined as always by my guy, Aaron Murray. Uh, Aaron, what's up, man? How you feeling today? I'm oh, man, doing good. Just got down my second of uh, three bowl games in about eight days. So just yep. lots of notes everywhere. Also dealing with the baby, Christmas, holidays, all that good stuff. But I'll be down in your neck of the woods end of the week. I'll be on the call for ESPN Radio for, for the Sugar Bowl. So excited to get down to T-Bob country and then jump on a quick fight and land in Atlanta just as the Bulldogs are kicking off their game. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a fun, fun weekend. So I'm excited. Pretty insane. Uh, Aaron Murray, despite just having a baby and it being Christmas, continuously working, calling games over the break. I know that uh, we missed you. Uh, well, me and Aaron missed y'all, our wonderful friends and listeners who hang out with us here every day. We missed you terribly over the last few days. Uh, very excited to be back. But here's the deal. Uh, due to some uh, issues, travel issues that everybody across the country is having right now, our poor fearless, intrepid producer Ryan Brumley has been stranded Mm. in St. Louis. Mm -mm -mm. Not the worst place to be stranded in as they have the best chess club in America. But still, what it means is that uh, we cannot go live on YouTube. So what we're going to do today, uh, whether you listen on on, on your, your favorite podcast app right now or you're watching us on YouTube, we are going to have three shows over the next few days. We're going to talk Michigan TCU today. We are going to talk UGA, Ohio State uh, tomorrow. And then on Friday, we got some best bets for you coming up where we're going to pick New Year's Eve. And uh, we're going to pick from some of the games that will be coming after Friday. You get the point, right? So going to be a fun three days. Very happy to be back. I missed you terribly. I'm sorry we can't be joining you live. I wish we could. But uh, let's go ahead and dive right in, Aaron. Today's episode is all about uh, Michigan and TCU, the two V three. And, uh, I'll let you go because I've got many, well, hmm. let's start here. And who, who is your favorite in this game? Golly. I don't know why I'm such a hater of Michigan. I feel like I've just been hating on them all mm-hmm. year. And, and I listen, I like hardball. I love the fact that, you know, he, he was doubted for so long at Michigan. They had a rough year a couple of years ago. People wanted him gone. People want him to go back to the NFL. And he continued just to do what he needs to do and, and, and really mold this football team into his identity. Run the football, dominate up front, be more physical. And, 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 and Michigan fans kind of had to humble themselves a little bit and understand that, hey, we're not Ohio State. We're not going to be Ohio State. We're not going to have Heisman-like quarterbacks. And, yes, we may play a, a, a style of football that is, I want to say, archaic, but it's, it's, it's an older. It's, it's more the stuff that we saw 10 years ago not the, the big, sexy 40, 50, 60 points per game, quarterbacks throw for four or five touchdowns. Sorry, guys, that's not us. Because if we try to do that, then we're going to lose that game at the end of the season. We're not going to yeah. be the Big Ten champs, and we're not going to be able to play, face teams in the playoffs. So I love what he's done. I respect what he's done, first off. Um, but to me, as, as a quarterback, I still go to that position first because I still believe you need – that guy at quarterback in order to win big time football games consistently listen jj mccarthy won versus ohio state he had the best game maybe of his career uh there a a few weeks ago in order for them to get to the big 10 championship to put them in this position so i give him credit for that i still i still doubt him a little bit though t bob i still doubt can can jj mccarthy realistically in super competitive games in the playoffs big stage go out there and play the way he did versus ohio state I just, I don't feel it. I don't know. You tell me I'm, 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 that's, that's where I'm stuck right now. I'm stuck with Max Duggan. Who's had a hell of a season, a guy that deserved to be in New York. That was in New York. That has been heroic this whole year uh, against a guy that has asked to play one really good game, which he did. But other than that, it's just not, not as tested as I would like to see at this point. Uh, I don't know, man. Are you talking about Michigan TCU? Or are you jumping ahead to Michigan, Georgia? I'm because like TCU. a lot of what you're saying, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give some weight to it when you're talking about that Georgia game, but I don't know, man, the more that I read about this game, the more fascinated I become about Michigan. And the more I start to talk myself into not only will they soundly beat TCU, but they, they can really punch Georgia much mm-hmm. more effectively than they did last year. Okay. On the quarterback front. Yes. Max Duggan is better than JJ McCarthy, obviously. Right. I'm not arguing that point, but you can appreciate this more than anyone. You know, what helps. Uh, great quarterback play, great offensive line play, and a great running game. And still, 
to this day, the biggest mystery of this college football season is how in the hell that TCU defense shut down B. John Robinson and that Texas rushing attack. Yeah. Because that TCU defense is garbage. I mean, they're bad. So many times this year and must have in situations, you have watched them give up the big drives, give up the big plays, only to be bailed out by Max Duggan. And I like Duggan, okay? And I like TCU. I've been a horn Frog this entire year, right? I mean, Max won me a lot of bets. I love this mm -hmm. whole story. But they really disappointed me in that Big 12 championship. And I think there's a bit of blood in the water. I think the defense is too bad. I think Michigan's defense is too good. So whatever gap you're seeing between Duggan and McCarthy is negated by every other position on the field where I think Michigan is superior. And especially I keep going back to that offensive line. And it's kind of insane mm -hmm. that I'm here with Michigan because like there, there's a really great write-up in the athletic by Bruce Feldman and Austin Meek right now. And they, and they're kind of recapping the journey, you know, that Michigan's been through the last few years to think about where they were uh, getting your ass kicked by Ohio state yeah. for the better part of a decade, uh, two and four in 2020. Right. Mm. Um, at, at the time, the idea was that Harbaugh couldn't win games against rivals. He couldn't win the big games. Right. I mean, they're ready to fire him. He, he agreed to take a 50% pay cut mm. from 8 million to 4 million. He gave his uh, bonus that he was contractually due back to Michigan employees who were affected by COVID. I mean, this was a man who had to concede a lot and yet he has been rewarded from it. And, and, and he did it in a fascinating way, Aaron, um, Jim Harbaugh, after this kind of come to Jesus moment, the year of 2020, where they go two and four, he adapted to the times while maintaining his core philosophies, which I find to be fat. It wasn't wholesale change. It wasn't yeah. like the Ed Ogeron story where he had to completely remake himself into something new. He still maintained like, okay, he became more emotionally open with his players, right? He became more vulnerable with his players, but he still stuck to the belief that they were going to create a tough old school team where they're going to out physical opponents. He gave his players more of a say so in everyday uh, decision-making, making things looser, making things more fun, but still maintaining that they were going to do some really hard work, right? And, and, and so in the end, he has um, he, he, he threaded the needle that I thought would be impossible to thread. Yep. He has created a, a, a modern, old-school, tough football approach that is working at the highest level of the sport. Because, like, Ohio State is more NFL talented than is Michigan, but they've gotten their ass kicked now two years in a row. And the only separating factor that you can come up with between the two teams is toughness and the toughness is played by Michigan. And so I don't know, man, I'm starting to feel really good. And, and, and you read quotes from guys like Mike Sanders still who had the big, uh, the big speech on the sideline against Ohio state. Like these cats are bought in and the quotes that I see out of this locker room uh, remind me of the quotes that you see out of everybody great championship teams, right? Where they're, everybody is fully bought in. Everybody's moving in the same direction. There's no dissent. Any dissent is quickly snuffed out by the players themselves without the coaches even having to do that. Like, I feel great about this Michigan team. I feel like they are going to beat down TCU, you feel, and I think they're going to give Georgia a run. You feel you feel just as good at this game that, that you did for LSU versus Tennessee. That's that, that's kind of the feeling I'm getting that from is, you right that now. Is, and look, that is, and look, and I look literally chose happened. Tennessee to win. You are a line sack of trash. <laughs> what game was it that you felt so – maybe it was – whatever LSU it was. Florida like, State. Were, it was the okay, first Florida game State. of the year, dude. Okay, it was okay. the first I, game. I think you – I think – I want to go back to one topic you brought up, and that was the Texas game. Because B. John Robinson, for those that have seen, like, you know, Todd McShay or a lot of these draft experts – and their, you know, their first renditions of, of a mock draft for the next NFL draft in, in the spring, you know, saw Bijan at number five. Bijan going to, I believe it was Philadelphia with the number five pick in the draft. And, and you talk about why did they have so much success defensively against Texas? It's because Texas was one-dimensional. They knew what Texas wanted to do. They wanted to run the ball with Bijan. You know, they were able to put an extra hand in the box and just fully commit saying, okay, listen, viewers, if you're going to, if Texas is going to win, we're going to give you those one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside and you better execute in, in, in a very high fashion. And, and Ewers had a terrible game. They were one of 13 on third downs and, and TCU was able to win that and, 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 you know, 17 to 10. And that's a big win for TCU that got them to this point. That's going to be the key. 
it, it's going to be the, it's it's the same mentality that Ohio State had, and I love what Ohio State came out with versus, versus Michigan because that was their philosophy. It was hey, listen, if they can't run the football, we don't trust JJ McCarthy to throw it at a consistent rate. Obviously, that yeah. bit him in the butt for the fact that it was. Let me just. It wasn't JJ McCarthy going out there and threading the needle. It wasn't JJ McCarthy going out there and putting the ball between defenders and making these incredible throws. The guys were wide ass open. I mean, go watch. I mean, the guys, I know you love when I say this, T, but I've watched the damn tape. Watch the, the guys tape. were <laughs> wide open. I mean, five, six yards behind defenders where it was an easy catch, run, touchdown, all that good stuff. So, yeah. you know, is TCU a little bit better on the defense side of the football than Ohio State, especially in the secondary? I would say so. So you think? that gives me confidence that they can match up a little bit better on the back end put that safety in the box, not give up the home run balls to, to JJ and make this a lower scoring game where if you get this thing into the fourth quarter, I still have faith because of what I've seen from this year from TCU. If this is a four quarter battle, Max Duggan is the quarterback that I want with the ball in his hands over JJ McCarthy. He has to get the ball in his hands and he will not get the ball in his hands when Michigan by the fourth quarter has erased TCU to bloody frog legged stumps that can no longer stand up. I mean, that's what they're going. They, they are going to wear them down. And again, yeah, you want to, you want to sell out and stop the run like Ohio state did. Okay. But watch out now. Michigan still got town at that skill position and uh, they? well, they proved it then. I mean, they proved it that game. Um, I'm look, I'm, I'm I just, I'm I think, I think I'll now. go, I'll go more house. I mean, like, go, go the week before versus Maryland and, and, and Maryland just torched it. Talia had a hell of a football game threw it all over Ohio state. And what was I saying the next week? That's fine. Like who cares? Like Ohio state, you know, you, you, you got torched through the air. Maryland had a field day. You won the football game. That's not Michigan's MO. So you're going to be fine. As long as you can stop the run, you're going to be okay. Well, I think Ohio state proved that they can't stop the run and they can't stop the pass. And this defense maybe was not as good as we thought they would be with their new defense coordinator with the guys they brought last year. They're just, a, they're just an average team that, you know, like you alluded to, is not very physical. Then you look at TCU first half of the season, not great on defense. And then they've kind of, you know, transformed themselves into being more of a physical team, more of a team that can play four quarters of football, mm. a team that could be a little bit more complimentary to their offense, get a couple stops, get some third down stops, get their offense, good field position, get some turnovers. I just think they're a, a, a more of a complete football team. And, and once again, I'll continue to go back to the quarterback position because that's what it's going to come down to. Big time games, T-Bob. I know you hate it because you're an offensive lineman, and I know you want to talk about the physicality and you want to talk about offensive lineman having the, the spotlight in this game. And, oh, it's, it's offensive lineman, and they're the best offensive line in the country. Let's shine. Some, I know. It's, this is a game that in the playoffs, what quarterback plays the highest level? What quarterback – can 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 you know lead you on a drive in the two minute drive at the end of half? What quarterback can come out there in the second half? What quarterback can lead you on a drive in the fourth quarter? My money, at the end of the day, is on the better quarterback, which he's proven. So so, so you're just ignoring year, you're just ignoring the fourth down the the fourth quarter touchdown drives that JJ McCarthy orchestrated against Ohio State. Like those don't. It's count. one game. I, I once again, it, it's a one game sample. What size. about the game winning drive against Illinois? Good drive. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, dude. I, I'm not look, I'm not, look, look, look. Yes, no in a vacuum, I, I, Duggan yeah. is a better quarterback. Yeah, 100%. But it's a team sport, you son of a bitch. And mm. uh, two, not one, but two Joe Moore awards back to back for the best offensive line in the country. Yeah, that worked out well up for them there last in year versus Georgia. That, 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 that Joe Moore award worked really well for them last year where they got their ass whooped by Georgia in that first Again, game. again, 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 again. You're 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 feeling a little this interesting. Okay, I'm I'm seeing it now. You're feeling a little threatened by Michigan, and I like this because you should be. Uh, I, I, you I act like every time I go here. against a team, mm -hmm. whether it was Alabama. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm scared of Alabama because yep. I don't. Well, want no, to you playoff. tweeted that. You, now, I did not now, tweet that. You tweeted now, that. I'm all of a sudden I'm scared of Michigan because I think TCU has an opportunity to win this football game. So I'm no. I'm scared for Georgia to get that rematch versus Michigan. No, no. I, if I'm Georgia, I would prefer to face Michigan because I've no, said you all would this. Not. I've said no, this not over TCU. No, you would not. Yes, I would. Because Michigan wants to play the same brand of football that Georgia does, and Georgia's a better version of that brand of football. So I would gladly welcome that if I'm the Bulldogs. Um, we're okay. In this latter comparison, yes, I, I, I maybe am reading between the lines here, but I, but I can see that maybe you're a little worried that Georgia could have, finally get out toughed by someone. But, but look, the, the bottom line is that, yes, Doug is a better quarterback, but when you factor in the rest of the team, uh, I, I do think Michigan's on a different level than TCU for TCU. You have a nice story. 
all the pieces have come together. And I've been a big TCU fan all year long. But for Michigan, you have a team that has had a singular goal and been fully bought in and fully expected to be here now for two years. I mean, everybody, like the same disrespect that motivated them the beginning of this season, where despite the fact they beat the shit out of Ohio State, they win the Big Ten. What happened to Big Ten Media Days this year? All 36 votes vote Ohio State as the Big Ten winner. What did Michigan do? They ran it back. They did it again. This time in Ohio State, you know, on the road, beautiful weather, no excuses, Big Ten champs once again undefeated, and they're not happy. They're not satisfied. It's like Sanders still said in that speech against Ohio State, you want to win a natty, the road starts here. And the next step in the road is TCU, and I'm sorry for the Horn Frogs, Great oh, I, I, story. They don't stand a chance. Michigan is going to beat them, going to beat them with like and pummel them. It's going to feel like one of those matches where multiple body shots and the guy's coughing up blood. Michigan's going to cover. All right, so we'll, we'll get the cover. I, so I think if, if and I'll break. We'll obviously have the breakdown that comes out tomorrow for the Georgia versus Ohio State game. You know, of the two games, I feel more confident that this game will be a closer match, a one score game. Then I do actually Georgia versus Ohio State. I think Georgia has the opportunity to really run away with that type that football game based on what we saw and what we saw Michigan do at, like you alluded to, at Ohio State um, there, there in the horseshoe. So I'm going to go with TCU. I, I like TCU to cover this football game. I like TCU to cover. I think it's six and a half points right now uh, on FanDuel. I think they cover. And once again, I think it's, I think it's seven and a half. Game. Sorry. Sorry. Half. Right? Even better. Even yeah. Better. Yeah. They, I don't love seven me, and a half. I would definitely that take seven six and a half. But sorry, it was Georgia versus Ohio State. I believe it's at six and a half. Yeah. You're telling me TCU with that offense and with the Michigan offense that has still been up and down this season can't can't keep the game with inside a touchdown. I, the, uh, the one thing yeah. that, the one thing that should give yeah. you confidence. I think you did make Absolutely. a good point there. The one thing that 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 should give you confidence if you're a Michigan fan is is the fact that you've been there, done that mentality. Like you understand what this week is about. I would say there's less jitters in, in, in preparation. This is a big game. Like we'd all be stupid to think that like these kids aren't staying up a little bit at late at night. They can say whatever they want. Like, no, I'm sleeping like a baby. I feel good. Bullshit. Like you're, you're, you've, you've agreed. You're, you're thinking about this and, and you should, this is for a lot of these kids, the biggest game of their life. This is the biggest game they've ever played it. If you're not a little bit nervous, then it doesn't mean enough to you. So every kid right now is, is thinking about the game, thinking about the, the their, ability to have some some glorious moment that goes down in, in, in the, the record books or legend for Michigan or TCU like you're thinking about all that stuff before this game well Michigan's already thought about it they've been there they've done that this is all brand new for TCU so how do they handle this week in preparation how do they handle the pregame warm-ups um, being in the stadium the spotlight the interviews all that is just a little bit uh, unique to them at this moment in Michigan should have a little bit more confidence as they get ready for this game. So I would not be surprised if Michigan comes up, you know, a little bit more what? aggressive early on. I think TCU will settle in late, late, late in the first quarter and uh, you know, beginning of the second quarter though. Okay. 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 I thought you were about to try to hit a little, uh, both sides of the fence. Wouldn't be surprised if Michigan ran away with this one, but you, you caught yourself there. No, no, no. I, I mean, okay. How, how did TCU handle all these elements when it came to the big 12 championship? Right. Something new. A lot of pressure. It's not easy to be the same uh, team twice in the season. The I'll tell you that. We, we, it's, uh, it's legit. Hello, it's, it's I not... know. I literally lost to a team we'd already beaten, yeah. and it cost me a national championship. You don't need to tell me. Yeah. But the God's honest truth there uh, was that we just got out coached, and I think TCU is about to get out coached, and they're not as talented and outplayed. I'm sorry, TCU. They broke for me, and, and it sounds if you are a loyal listener of Snaps, you're probably like Team Up. Where's all this coming from? Um, TCU really disappointed me how they called those last two plays of that game, yeah, not putting it in Max Duggan's hands, the offensive line, not being able to get the push to finish in the end zone. You know who would have finished that Michigan would have finished that. And again, I'm so fascinated by what Jim Harbaugh has done from two and four in 2020 to, like I said, changing his attitudes, keeping the core philosophies, making staff changes, going younger, empowering those coaches to have an impact it's all paid huge dividends and it's made me into a big michigan believer man again i think the problem that like you said when it comes to georgia which i'm getting ahead of myself is that um georgia's similar 
in a, like yeah. Georgia has the toughness advantage. Yeah. Like, like, like don't, uh, don't peak, don't, don't peak too soon. T Bob, let's save some, some nuggets for next week when we break down if it is Michigan versus Georgia. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, I, I love Michigan here and, and I'll leave you with this. I'm going to go a bit. Mike, so are you, are you, are you, you still feel, you, I know you're seven and a half. You, you started to waver a little bit on me there. I'm taking TCU with the seven I and a half. I waver on shit. I knew it was seven are and a half. Okay. All right, so I'm you're standing take strong. Or excuse me. You're taking Michigan. Um, yeah, I'm taking Michigan. Mm. I'm taking Michigan, dude. Mm. I think there are clearly two best teams in the country this year and it's Michigan and Georgia and it's a win for tough old school football, which you don't appreciate Aaron, because uh, you're all about finesse and the spread where I'm about the five fingers balling into a fist and breaking the will of your opponent, right? Why are there five O linemen? Because when they come together, they form an unstoppable punch. Um, Allow me to go full Mike Leach in here though, because I, this is also part of my love affair with Michigan right now is sometimes things, line up in your life and i almost take it like it's some sort of portent or omen from the gods and so i'm reading this incredible athletic article about the reinvention of michigan and it's an innovation that started from within well it happens to directly coincide with this incredible twitter thread that i'm reading by this guy uh cultural tutor it's my new favorite twitter account and he's discussing the renaissance and how the, 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 the secret key to the renaissance, and this is actually really good information. I think for any coach who wants to be a football coach um, that like the key to the renaissance wasn't creating just new ideas from out of nowhere. It was looking to the past and the ancients and innovating off of that. And I'll read you the last few lines from here. So I apologize. Stick with me here. Um, He's talking about a philosopher. This guy Gerard says, Gerard believed the main prerequisite, for real innovation is, quote, a minical, minimal respect, end quote, for the past and the mastery of its achievements. Minimal, key here, means there shouldn't be so much respect that it becomes a reverence in which the possibility of improvement is seen as impossible. So you have to respect the past enough, but not to the point where it paralyzes you, right? You have to be willing to make some changes. Um, it goes on, regardless of whether innovation is itself good or bad, societies in which the past was revered to the extent that it was viewed as unsurpassably greater showed relatively little innovation. That was early Harbaugh. He was trying to capture the past with a full old school staff, full old school mindset. There was no growth there. Okay. That was also Europe pre-Renaissance. Um, go on. Rather, Gerard believed there simply had to be enough respect that changes were built on what came before um, rather than totally diverging or overly revering it. I talked about threading the needle, right? And that real innovation means renewal and rejuvenation from the inside rather than novelty from the outside, which is what we think of the word as meaning today. So um, basically, that's exactly what Jim Harbaugh did here. And if you look at any great coaches, what do they do? They take the concepts that the ancients employed, your old triple option attacks, and they make it into something new. You don't have to go to Mars and, and, and come up with some formation or something that's never been done. You have to innovate on the concepts. And, that's, and Harbaugh said, look, I want to remain tough. We're not going to be able to out-talent Ohio State. I think that's our path to getting there. But I need to change how I'm creating that toughness. And I find that to be fascinating. I find that to be forward thinking. I think that that has created a culture at Michigan where every single player and coach is fully bought in. And I think you're going to see it pay huge dividends come this playoff. And it starts with TCU getting waxed. And then maybe the Georgia Bulldogs after Dax. T-Bob is such a Michigan man right now. He's gone from a, uh, uh, obviously, yep. an LSU Tiger to a VFL to the Petite Trojan Boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now he is the, the Michigan fan. I mean, T Bob is a, is, I mean, he, he, when he loves you, T Bob will get on both knees and, you know, make you feel real loved. Look, so, I, I, again, again, I just find it endlessly fascinating. I know, I'm with you. I that I was right. having my mind blown about the idea that innovation actually comes from building upon the past, right? Yes. Uh, well, everything, I mean, like everything always comes back in style. It's like yes. fashion. Everything, like my wife wears, you know, stuff from the seventies and eighties. You know, it's supposed to be in now. All of a sudden, I don't, I don't know. But so Jim Harbaugh did this, and he has like, yeah. like an off-meta team. It's not spread. It's not any of this yeah. other stuff, but it's working. Now yeah. the problem is, 
is that Georgia seems to be the best blend of future All and of past yes. as they have the talent and everything, but whatever, we'll get to Georgia in a second. So yeah, look, I love TCU. I loved you all year. I supported you all year, but I am very much off the bandwagon ahead into this game. I think Michigan and McCarthy rolls. All right. Well, T-Bob's got Michigan rolling, covering that seven and a half point spread. I got TCU. Uh, I think they can win this football game, but definitely covering that seven and a half. So, we leave it up to you guys. Go horn. I mean, also, I hate this thing. I'm doing the. What, what does Michigan even have? Uh, what do you mean? The BM. You never seen oh, is that? That what that was? Okay. I have no idea. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know if they do that or not. Uh, I'm new to this Michigan thing. Okay, I'm like one day in here. I'm still learning. So kind of learning my ways, learning the tradition, learn how we feel about all these different teams. Uh, but you know what? Us, uh, us here, Big Blue Nation, we are very happy to be back where we belong atop the big 10 in the playoff fighting for national championships. Uh, All right, look, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Thank you so much. Remember guys, like always, please, please, please spread the word uh, rate and review the podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast, that really helps Uh, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please. The algorithmic gods that rule our existence. If you sign up for FanDuel, use the promo code snaps. Not only do you get sign up deals, but you help out your boys and a huge thank you to, uh, Papa Colin in the volume uh, as yeah, they sent us a nice gift over the break. How about that? It was, it, it was wonderful. And uh, thank you to Ryan Brumley, Polly Walnuts, Pat Gunner, Danny Cardin as the rest of the team. We'll be back tomorrow with a little Ohio state UGA preview. We'll see you then.